everyone it has been way too long but i did want to come to you guys and let you know that i had my beautiful baby boy um so i'm excited to share that with you guys <sighs> it's been a long journey but i wanted to come and you know share with everyone everything that has been going on within that time frame so i did not record because of a super main reason i was huge i mean i'm still huge i just came down a little bit but um you know being pregnant and being like super fat it's it, it's hard when you're used to when you're used to looking like this to what i look like now um but yeah so let me guys so let me tell you uh basically the birth which is what you're all here to find out about okay so i had my son at 41 weeks um was it 41 it was like yeah he was seven days late put it that way um just like with my little liam bear he was seven days late they both literally uh contraction started on day seven for both of them so um i was going to the hospital um i mean i was going to my prenatal appointments doing everything that i was supposed to do um and the doctor informed us that my baby was i was 39 weeks and the baby was measuring at 42. um and i will insert another picture somewhere around here to show you how big I was at 39 weeks. So basically the doctor was 39 weeks. So basically the doctor was um, stating they wanted to schedule me to be induced. I was like, I really didn't want to be induced. Um, I wanted to have my son uh, naturally. I wanted him to come on his own. When I say naturally, I mean like without any medical intervention as far as like inducing me or anything like that. But once I found out that he was measuring at 42 weeks, at 39 weeks, I was kind of freaking out. Um, so me and his father discussed it and I decided, you know what? I don't want to have a baby that's super big. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm okay with doing a membrane sweep. So that's what they did. So they swept my membranes, um, which is basically... It's kind of like a way, it's kind of like an induction, some, a little bit. Um, there's no medication or anything like that, but it's supposed to start labor within 24 to 48 hours. And it did. So, because I kept having like irregular contractions for two weeks, two whole weeks, and it was excruciating. And I was like, this baby's going to come, this baby's going to come. And the baby never came. So I thought the membrane sweep would help speed along the process um, because I really did not want to be induced. And honestly, I felt like I had a lot of pressure. I had pressure from uh, my partner's family to be like, oh, you should induce. Everyone was like, induce, induce, you need to get the baby out. And I was just like, slow your roll, hold up. The baby will come when he's ready to come. And right now, I'm not gonna, I'm not forcing myself to be induced if that's not what I need. Now, granted, uh, I did decide that I was going to go in for an induction at 42 weeks, not at 41 or 40. Um, so we went, okay, so uh, two days after the memory sweep is when I is when my son was born. So I went, my doctor's appointment was on Monday. I had, and then I went into labor on Tuesday. So... Uh, I got so it was so funny because like we're like just relaxing and I'm thinking to myself like when is this baby gonna come I lost my mucus plug and the mucus plug is just basically the mucus that um you know that's into that's like uh in the vagina or whatever and it's pretty much like in the canal uh, and then it like drops when the baby is about to come so I was losing my mucus plug for like two weeks and then no baby I was like, okay, mucus plug is gone. I'm ready for baby. When I had Liam, I um, lost my mucus plug. And then the very next day, I went into labor. With this baby, I lost my mucus plug in like a week and a half or like two weeks. Still no baby. So 
I was trying everything. I was walking. I was eating pineapple. They say if you eat pineapple, it uh, ripens the cervix, so it helps you go into labor. It causes contractions. I was eating pineapple. I was drinking red berry leaf tea, uh, and that raspberry raspberry leaf tea is supposed to strengthen your uterus. Um, so I was drinking like two cups a day. Um, I, I made it like super strong. I was ready for this baby to come out. I was tired. I was exhausted. And to be honest, I was really, I'm really like ready to get back into my body. I'm ready to be skinny again. And I'm fat. <laughs> I was like 140, like 130, 140 when I got pregnant with Liam and I'm over like 200. That tells you a lot. So anywho, back to the story. So, um, so basically, uh, Tuesday comes, I'm doing good all Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon from two to like, when it, it started at two o'clock where I started having contractions. I was like, oh, these feel like the real contractions. And what contractions really feel like are cramps, like heavy menstrual cramps. And um, it feels, and when you know when you're like really having those serious contractions, you can't, you can't talk to anyone. Like there's no having a conversation. I mean, you can, but like in between contraction, like when you're having a contraction, you're just like, don't even talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. Don't talk to me at all. So, um, so I was having like serious contractions and I was like, oh my gosh, they feel like they're, they, they feel like they're getting stronger. And you also know when you're having like really intense contraction is when you feel like you have to poop like it feels like something is like coming out and it's or about to come out and it's really like a painful poop tmi but that's what it feels like and i was like oh my gosh so then we started timing them and on the contraction timer on the app it's like oh get ready uh call an ambulance and i was like yeah it's time i'm ready to have this baby so um we go uh to to the hospital and they checked me to see how many centimeters I'm dilated. I was dilated five centimeters, which means, okay, she's ready to have this baby. I only needed five more, so they admitted me. Um, so I get admitted and I made some, some little videos and I'll share the clips and stuff with you guys. So uh, once I got admitted, I was like, yeah, this is it. You know, I'm gonna have this baby. Um, and I was trying to do, I was trying to go natural. And I just remember thinking that like when I was in so much pain, I'm like, I can do this. I can get through this. I can do it. I can do it. Um, but my partner was just there on his phone looking at videos. And honestly, it was really pissing me off. I was like, in my mind, I mean, when I think about it, I'm like, it's nothing to be mad about. But at that moment, I was just like, I'm going through all this pain. You should be talking to me. You should be doing something. You should just be looking at your phone. And it was really funny because him and my mom kept taking time like turns coming back inside the room but i was getting mad at them because no one was really talking to me and then eventually he came over and was like reading me bible scriptures and like telling me i'm strong and i can do it and stuff like that um so that happened so then um they kept checking me and i was not like progressing um i was still like five centimeters and honestly i was a little annoyed I was like, okay, so mind you, I got admitted at 8, at 8 p.m. So I was watching the contractions that whole time. Um, so I get admitted at 8 a.m. And now it's like 2 in the morning. And they're like, oh, you know, you're still at 5. I was like, what? Do you, all this pain that I'm going through and I'm still only at 5 centimeters? I was mad. I was, I was eating it. I was like, this is crazy. So I was like, listen. I don't think I can do this anymore. Like I think I'm, I think I'm gonna need the medication. So my mom was like, "No, you're strong. You can do this." And honestly, and that I was really pissed off because like that's not what I wanted to hear. What I wanted to hear was like, "Hey, if you want the medication, take it." But you know, I do appreciate her for uh, for trying to keep me strong. But like, if if I would have heard that I was progressing to like maybe seven or eight or nine, ten centimeters, I would have been okay. But to hear that I wasn't progressing at all. It was like, okay, I'm going through all this pain for no reason. Make a long story short, let's wrap this up. I ended up um, getting uh, the epidural and they ended up increased, they ended up giving me Pitocin. Oh, I'm sorry, backtrack. They gave me Pitocin to speed up the, to, uh, speed up the contractions or whatever um, so I could dilate more, but it wasn't working. So they had to keep increasing the doses of, uh, dosage of Pitocin. So, they were increasing the dosage of Pitocin, um, and then I got the epidural. And now, it, I got the epidural at like, 
who time was it maybe like five in the morning i don't remember but i just remember it was kind of like light outside and i was so annoyed um so i finally got the epidural and then they started increasing the pitocin so then i got to seven centimeters so then later on um I think I think one nurse they were like changing shifts and they're like oh you're at seven and I was like okay great and then another nurse was like oh you're at nine I'm like oh this is awesome then it's it's almost time for me to push I'm ready to push I'm like I'm tired I'm exhausted and then eventually the epidural wore off so not only did it wear off but pitocin like helps increase uh, contractions and I was um the contractions were coming so fast without a break and I was feeling all of those contractions it was like I felt like, oh my gosh, this baby is about to come out. So I kept calling a nurse like, hey, you know, I gotta, I feel like I have to poop. This baby's about to come. And they're like, okay, let's check you. So they kept checking me. And it, honestly, it was so frustrating because they're like, no, you're still the same. I'm like, this is impossible. So it was very frustrating experience. Um, so to say the least, uh, now it's like probably 11 o'clock and the nurse that was my pediatrician not pediatrician i'm sorry who was my ob with liam um she actually was the one who delivered my baby his name is Kawhi, by the way so he, they delivered Kawhi. um she so basically she was like listen um you're not progressing and if you don't progress in a little bit more we're gonna have to give you a c-section and i was like see who no 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 i don't want a c-section you know that's why with liam i had a home birth because i know hospitals are privy to want to jump on cutting somebody and i'm like hell no i don't want a c-section i want to wait this out um so they kept increasing the doses of pitocin and i never i don't think i progressed past like eight centimeters i was like eight eight centimeters and i was like okay if i'm eight centimeters that's good you know i'm so close to being 10 but they were like, no, the more we increase the Pitocin, the more the baby heart rate is dropping. And I know a lot of research. I've, I mean, I've been doing research for years. As you can see, I've unblocked my tube, like my in tubes, like I unblocked my tubes like five years ago. So before I even knew my tubes were blocked, I was doing research years before that. So I'm like, well, the baby's heart will jump back up. If the baby heart rate continues to decline and it's not going up, then it's a cause for concern. But if the baby heart rate is dropping and going up and dropping and going up, then that just means it's tr it's trying to enter through the birth canal. So I'm just like, uh, well, let's just give it some more time. Then they're like, oh, well, you're, it looks like your water finally did break or it broke on its own. And there's, it's a little greenish. I'm like, okay, so that means it's meconium. Meconium is baby poop. So that means the baby pooped inside me. So mind you, like, you know, I know a lot, I know, I've done a lot of research, so I know. Um, so, and then I was GBS positive. GBS positive, GBS is like when you have like a back of a, a, a vaginal bacteria. And if the baby, so you have to get antibiotic, antibiotics for it. So because my water broke and I, ha and I was GBS positive and there was meconium and the, boop, the baby pooped inside me, it was just all the odds were against me. So because I know that GBS is a serious bacteria uh, infection and meconium, you know, it, sh it should not be in there with the baby for too long because then the baby can in ingest it and then it can cause all type of illnesses um, if the baby ingests too much of it. So they were like, listen, the baby heart rate is still dropping because me and my partner were like, no, we want more time. We want more time. We, we really wanted to, you know, I wanted to birth this baby vaginally. Um, so because of that, I had to get a C-section. And The thought of knowing that I could not have my baby vaginally um, it did something to me, you know, I just like broke down in the hospital because I was just like, this is not what I want, you know, this is not what I want to do um I did not want that but you know when it comes to the safety of your child you have to do with things that you don't want to do and sometimes 
you know, that's why hospitals are there and, you know, for medical intervention. The reason why I did not do a video right after I gave birth to my son is because I was still processing the birth that happened. Back to the story. They tell me I have to go for a C-section. I am devastated. You know, I'm just like dead to the world. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want anybody talking to me. Even though I know this would need to be done. I said, I don't want anybody talking to me. So, um, sorry, this is so hard for me. I didn't think it would be, I thought, you know, because it's been a week, it'd be easier to talk about. But it's still really hard for me. Um, so, we go back. They prepare me for, you know, prepare me. And I'm so devastated, you know, by the whole thing. Uh, and I just remember being so scared. I just remember being so scared. And, you know, everyone was trying to tell me, oh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So I go, they, they prep me. Um, my partner was like, told my mom, he, he decided to let my mom go with me. He's like, oh, you know what? Let your mom go with you. I know you're going to need prayer and she can pray for you. So my mom goes, so, so eventually I go back for myself and then they bring her back. And they're just like, everyone seemed so happy. Like they're just going about their day. And as like, you know, the doctor, they have like the drape up and like they're talking to one another and like, oh yeah, so what are you going to do this weekend? Oh, this is what I'm going to do this weekend. How about you? What are you going to do? Oh, this is my weekend. <laughs> so everyone's laughing at it. They're laughing and giggling. And I am sitting here like, what is happening to my life right now? And I, <laughs> it was just like, they're just going about their day. And I just felt like, oh my God, I'm actually having a C-section. This, this is horrible. I'm one of the statistics of, you know, I'm very like holistic and I'm into everything natural. So I'm just like, you know, I'm a statistic now that I had a C-section. And, and I'm just thinking all these horrible things in my mind. And um, I'm just like, when is it going to be over? It felt like it felt, it felt like it took so long and they were just cutting. And you could feel pressure, but you didn't feel any pain. And I'm like, man, it's taking forever. And I'm just so sad. You know, I'm so sad. I felt like the pregnancy, like I had a bad pregnancy. And I had uh, like... A bad birth not bad but it wasn't what I expected it to be so because the birth was not what I was hoping or expect that it would be and then the pregnancy was just not joyous I was thinking So I was just thinking that everything would have went, you know, a lot better than it did. And it didn't. So um, my first son, Liam, was born with little to no hair. So I had so much heartburn with my son, Kawhi. I was just like, oh my gosh, this kid better have hair because I'm having a heartburn really early on. And if this kid does not have hair, I'll feel very cheated. <laughs> But to my surprise, that's, that was the first, like the first thing I wanted to know that he was okay. And the second thing I wanted to know, does he have hair? And yes, when they, when they uh, brought him over, I felt like everybody seen him before me. And that was another thing that I didn't like about the, the, the birth. Like when they brought him out, uh, everyone was like, oh my God, he's so big. He's so big. Everybody was talking about, him, you know, about how big he was. And my mom looked over the curtain. She looked at me. She was like, he it's huge i was like what really i want to see i want to see so they're everyone's talking about how big he is and they're like all like looking at him and i'm just like okay when is it gonna be my turn for me to finally see him so then they finally bring him over after a long awaited time and i kind of wanted to see him when he still had like the very next all over him which is like the white gooey stuff and it's like everything was wiped all off of him and it's just like oh, i, I kind of wanted that to stay on him i wanted to see him um by the time they brought him over, I saw his hair, and he's all wiped off, and his hair, it was, like, lots of hair. I was like, yeah. I mean, like, not, like, super hairy, baby. Like, like, super hairy. Um, 
but it was like it was it was enough and I was just like oh that's so great so then that happened so then I was in the hospital recovering for a nice three days no I think after I had him I was in the hospital for two days so then I was recovering for two days um and as soon as I like heard him, you know cry that's when I like was happy I was like oh he's okay you know he's born and for anyone who is wondering how much did this baby weigh he was 10 pounds and 12 ounces yes basically an 11 pound baby so he was pretty big uh so maybe there was probably no way he was gonna slide through my birth canal being basically 11 pounds <laughs> so maybe a c-section was the only option um if i had to look back and say if there's anything i could have done differently what would have been and honestly probably nothing well no 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 i'm sorry not nothing if there was anything that i could have done differently what i would have done is because both of my babies were posterior meaning their backs was facing my back the head was down but their back was facing my back instead of their back facing my stomach it was facing my back so liam was that way and so was Kawhi. so um what now that i know that i have posterior babies what i would do or what I would have done going forward is I would have done a lot of exercises and and both of them were sunny side up so I would have done a lot of exercises to make sure that they're not posterior to try to help put put them in the you know a better position because that's what make it harder for them to come down and because my baby was 11 pounds but if uh if if I would have uh maybe done like more exercises to help with you know with not having a posterior baby um i would have done that i would have done like more exercises i would have probably went to a chiropractor more often um probably went to a chiropractor and that's about it because i was exhausted so working out that wasn't gonna happen you know but um definitely doing more uh more exercises for specifically for posterior babies I would have done that so the last day at the hospital we decided to get like pictures taken of Kawhi and Liam and me and Papa so we did that and and then we came home so uh, that was pretty much the birth experience I do have some videos that I'm gonna throw in there just so you guys can see this video is a little bit longer than I expected it to be but um, if you guys have any other questions about like what happened, feel free to comment below and I will get back to you. Oh my gosh, how could I go without showing you the baby? Right now I have little Liam on me and he's sleeping. He was just nursing me. So this is my little Liam bear. He's like knocked out right now. He's like gone to the world. Little guy, little man. <laughs> he's like so, he's like in his cradle right now. All right, so I will talk to you guys later.